we all had the same birthday on the same day, right? It's awesome. I thought, so we, I, I got to miss out on the take up selfie. So I thought if you guys would you know, just be with me, I'm going to take one right now with all of you. I'll get everybody in, the most we can, in, all right? So, all right, everybody just, you know, you may be in it, and you feel, if you're in it, you're going to be online, so look good, all right? So, all right, all right, here we go. On three, everybody just say radius. One, two, three. Radius! All right. Wait, take it longer. Yeah. <laughs> I was reflecting earlier this week, kind of remembering back here to this time, uh, one year ago, just nervous, excited, wondering what God is going to do on our first Sunday as we launched at Radius, and it was a great Sunday, and every year we're going to take time just to mark this moment to celebrate what God has doing and to look forward to what God is going to do, because we're more interested in what is happening in front of us than what's happened behind us, right? Isn't that true in all of our lives? With Christ, we can always look forward to what He is going to do because we've done it in our life. And so we're going to mark this day and say, hey, you know, it's what we have accomplished, but let's move forward from that. We've been celebrating our birthday, and I was reflecting. A, a, one of my favorite uh, poems came to me, and I, I, I want to read a little bit first of it to you. It's one of my favorite. I learned it early in my, I can't, I don't have it memorized anymore except for the end, but I do have this, right? Two, were, two roads diverged in a yellow wood, and sorry I could not travel both. And be one traveler, long I stood. And looked down one as far as I could, to where it bent in the undergrowth. Then took the other, as just as fair, and perhaps the better claim, because it was grassy and one and wear. I love that poem, as it, and it continues, it talks about the less traveled road. Robert Frost wrote that poem, and I think if you have joined with us at Radius, you have chosen the less traveled road. It is a road that if you if you chose, maybe you came from a different church, maybe you've never been to church, and you came, starting, joining a church startup, a plant, is not the easiest thing to do. If you come to a, a church start, you're, you're going to be setting up by the chair you set in. Somebody had to set up, and maybe you set your own chair up, and maybe somebody had to do the sound. And it, It's not a promise of ease. It's not a place where you, you sometimes have to give up maybe some of the things of uh, being able to be ministered to because you're busy ministering. So church starting a small little church and going from there is, is the road less traveled. But I believe it's a road that always, it always has a promise of adventure. You know, that's true. If you've joined me with us in the last year of Radius, it has been full of adventure. Whether there's been smoke coming out of the kitchen, all right? whether we didn't have enough chairs, whether the air conditioning wasn't working, whether it was pouring down rain, there is always, as you kind of do this journey of something new, is an adventure. You never know. But there's one thing that we've seen as we've taken this journey that's been full of adventure and full of opportunity to make a difference. Every one of us. As you know, as we gather and we know that each of us in these seats, we don't see them, you as a number or just a, 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 someone to fill a seat. We see you as a person. We see you as a part of something that we're seeking to do. The road less traveled. And for us, as I look, Radius has done that. It's a journey that's, that's been, as we've been journeying through a church plant, today we celebrate that journey. Today we do. We say this is the one year mark and really, for many, some of us that were on the launch team who gathered before we started and said, you know, we're going to meet in this house. We're going to kind of dream and think about what God wants to do with the church in St. Pete. And what's it going to look like to be radius? And we sat around the house and just talked and, and thought about it and prepared for that launch, man. It was, it was great. And during a time like this, you may say, I, 
maybe we want to speak on, we've spoken on many times, who we are. Who we are is radius. But I was thinking and reflecting on a week less about who we are and why we are. That's what I want folks to say. Why do we exist? Why is the church in general and in specific radius here? It's more, than, it's more powerful than the who. In fact, the why drives who we are. See, the, the why for radius has the simplest point, guys, the simplest thing. Why radius, why the church is here is to help introduce people to Jesus. Because we believe that everybody, when they meet Jesus face to face, when they meet Him, they can experience life change. That's the why. That's the why we set up every week. That's the why that probably you're sweating right now if you're not I am. That's the why that we show up in, at the shuffleboard club. That's why we, we build love lunches. That's the why because we go out to, to be tangible love in the community in real ways. Why? Because we want to see people's lives change. And, what, and, and life change, we all have experience. We need our lives to be changed in some way or another. Wouldn't you agree? All of us? I mean, looking at where I'm at, I want to be more on fire for God. I want to, I want to surrender more of myself to Him. That's, that's what I need always in the constant change. And every time I gather together with you, every time I engage in what race is about, it, it step by step begins to change who I am. I surrender more of my fear, more of my comfort zone, more of myself to Jesus. Life change. <coughs> We want to be a church, as I said, that helps people encounter Jesus in tangible ways. We, just want to, we, we don't want to be a church that just sits here and, and asks you to come and, 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 and talk and talk, but don't live it out on Monday through Saturday, right? We've all maybe experienced that. Maybe that's been us at times in our life. We, are, we don't want to be that. We want to be a church that, here, that comes together, loves, here's the truth about who Jesus is, that inspires us to move out those doors Monday through Saturday to live it. Because there are people all around us looking for answers. Looking for their life to change. Maybe that's you today. You know, I was, before we even started, um, I was reading maybe two years, year and a half before we started Radius. I was reading some article and I was reading it, Men's Health Magazine. You've heard this, if you've heard it once, you've heard it ten times, but it, it really is a driving factor of why we want to be a light in the community. 2010 Men's Health Magazine ranked St. Pete as the saddest city in the nation. I, I looked at that and I could not believe it. Because you, you guys live here. It's beautiful. I mean, there's things going on every weekend. You've got the beach. You've got, you got at your fingertip anything that you want to do. And I think, why is that? You know what I came to the conclusion is? That ultimately all, we all get this. That all these things that we can try and get involved in and seek to find happiness and peace in, they will not, they will not satisfy us, will they? I mean, we can get involved in this, we can get involved in that, and we can try to just engage in it. And if we choose any of these things, at the end, that they won't do what our soul is seeking. We believe at our core that the very thing that we all are created for is relationship with Jesus Christ. With relationship, not religion. And I think there's a, I think there's a community out here that have been hurt by religion, are, are, are skeptical of religion, and I get that. And so we don't want to be religion. We want to be a people who are interested in really relationships with each other. To go out and be Jesus in our community. Because what we have to offer them is not a set of rules, not a religion, not a, not a, not a little guideline you've got to fit within what I think, and if you don't fit with what I think, we don't like you. We want to invite everyone to experience a relationship with Jesus because this is what He desires, and we are His ambassadors moving out. And the beauty of the church is it isn't a building. This is not the church. In the, in the years to come, this probably will not be where we gather. Because this is not the church. As you know, last week we met at the beach because we believe the church is people and wherever we meet is church. Now, amen, right? Me and, me and Chad were talking just this week and we're going to plan something soon, hopefully, that we're going to be, we're going to be the church in the park. We're going to go down to the park and we're going to go where people are at. We're going to love them. We're going to have worship with them and we're going to eat together with them. Because why? If you look at the New Testament and look at when God talks about the church, He rarely says come, He says go. 
Go. Go be. And the cool thing that is, is it's not up to you know me. We are all the church, and if you go into your places of work, in your schools, with your friends, in your neighborhoods, and that you just filter out as like just moving out in every widening circles, and you be Jesus there. That's tough sometimes, I know. They cut you off. They take advantage of you. You get hurt. But if we keep in mind that we are called to something greater, and if we give into that greater, we will be fulfilled in our life. We will find a sense of, of something that we're doing that's bigger than us. And we will see life change. Go. The story in the, in the New Testament of, of, of Philip is in Acts chapter 8. And this is, you guys know, in Acts chapter 1 and 2, we, we went on that a lot early on about who we are. This is the church and this is how they operate. But the church has a story far greater than just a couple chapters in Acts. And it moves forward in chapter 8, the beginning of chapter 8, you begin to find that the church begins to be persecuted. They're kind of wanting to stay huddled in Jerusalem. Like, you know, to be here, let's, let's wait till Jesus comes back. We'll just stay. This is a pretty good place. This is all comfort. I know where I live. I know all my neighbors. I'll stay here. And God sends pers allows persecution on the church. And it sends the church out. And he's trying to get the church out because remember at the very beginning of Acts when he tells the church, you'll be witnesses in Jerusalem. I got that, right? I'm good here. I'm good in my little circle right here. And then it says not only Jerusalem but in Judea and Samaria. And then what's the last thing he says? Am I saying, you might want to say it with me? Other most parts of the earth, right? Ends of the earth. And maybe in these 120 that first heard this, these 120 thought, okay, yeah, I mean, Obviously, God's power, we experience God's power, we see God moving among us. But that, that, that ends there, that's going to be a long time from now. Eight chapters later, the very beginning of the church, God's like, alright, I've had enough of your, your comfort zones, now it's time to push you. And they start moving and spreading out. There's a story of Philip, and this is what happens, uh, uh, Acts chapter 8. If you have your Bibles, you can turn there, if not, it'll be up on the screen. And we're looking at Philip. Just a little backstory when we jump in these verses in verse 26 is we're going to see that Philip has been called to go and he's speaking to Samaria. Philip's doing a good job, right? Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria. To the Jewish people, Samaria was the farthest they one. That was the unreached. That was the one they thought, you know what? I don't really like them. I'm kind of prejudiced against them. I, I'm going to look how good of a person I am. I'm going to go witness to these people in Samaria. And he goes and all this huge revival happens in these cities. Philip's like, you know, this amazing evangelist. People are just coming to Jesus left and right. He's like, this is awesome. And then all of a sudden... God turns to Philip and says, I need you to go. I need you to go down on the desert road. Now, could you imagine that for a second, Philip? Phil's like, man, I'm loving this, man. This is happening. I see all those big things happen. Surely God is where you want me. And all of a sudden, it's like, hey, hey, Philip, you're doing good here. I'm awesome. But I need you to go over there to the deserted desert road. To the road, let's travel. Catching these verses in 26, as for Philip, the angel of the Lord said to him, Go south, down the desert road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started out. Another translation that says, And while he was on his way, here's the beauty of this moment. Philip had been obedient to God. You see what? You know what we want? We want radius to be a people that are obedient to move out and on their way. On their way. When they're on the way to the why, when you're on the way to the work, on just living your life normal. I'm not asking you to wear a three. We're not asking you to wear a three-piece suit with a huge hit Bible and beat people over the head. I'm asking you to be normal, you, but go out with understanding that you're carrying something great with you. You're carrying hope. You're carrying the light of the world, and you and me have a responsibility to share it. But it starts with obedience. Those like, okay, God, I, I, I'm liking the limelight right here. This is my comfort zone. I'm feeling good about what I'm doing. I'm feeling pretty good. I'm going to stay here. And God says, now, move out of the crowds, move out of the highlights, and let me go take you into a desert road. And on his way, because he was obedient, he had a God encounter. Because here's the, here's the truth, guys. We keep reading here. I'm going to keep, uh, we'll tell you the read. So he started out and met the treasure of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority of, un, un, under the Candace, the queen of Ethiopia. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship and then was now returning. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, again the word, go. Go over and walk along beside the carriage. Can I just be real with you? If you are not willing to get out, it's going to be weird. 
If you're not willing to feel awkward for Jesus, you will not ever see God do anything great with you. Those moments, can you imagine? Okay, I'm going to go to the desert. I'm going to sit here on this road and wait. All of a sudden, you see this chariot going by. This guy is reading out loud. I think he's crazy. And people driving the car and you hear him talking out loud. And realize it's their phone, but you hope it's their phone because they're talking out loud. You might have been there. You're like, are you crazy? I'm going to kind of slow down let them go high. <laughs> Philip's like, this guy is driving by. And all of a sudden, he hears the Holy Spirit say, you see, go, go see that chariot? Go fall after it. Run beside it. Are you kidding me? I'm going to get killed. Is this is a desert road. I'm going to abandon it. All right. Phil takes off. And I don't know if the chariot's going quick, quick or slow. I don't know if Philip is sprinting or he's just kind of walking. With, I mean, awkward, right? Ethiopian looks over, eunuch looks over and sees this guy running beside the chariot. But see, if we're able to get past our awkwardness, if we're able to get past ourselves, if we're able to get out of the greatest comfort zone, which is our own insecurities, we put ourselves in a place for God to use us in a great way because God was already working in that situation. Where are you at with your work right now? Where is it that God says, I want to use you, but you're like, oh, I don't know. I, I'm, not, I'm not this. I don't know if I can step out here. If God's calling you, He's already there preparing the way. Philip ran over and heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Philip then asked, do you understand what you're reading? You want something that interesting? Philip initiates. Here's the truth, man. You and me, you and me. We are called to be the light of Jesus. It means building relationship with people, being real with people, being obedient to people, moving out, right? And then initiating conversation. The, the, the initiating conversation isn't some condemning judgment thing. It's say, hey, do you understand what you're just reading? Hey, hey, how are you doing? Hey, what's going on in your life? How can I, how, what can I do for you? How can I be there for you? Initiate conversation. Build relationship with people. God's about ready to move. The man replied, how can I unless someone instructs me? He urged Philip to come into the carriage and sit with him. That's beautiful, isn't it? Are we available? You say, why radius? Why radius? Because we're, both, we're meant to be a people that move out in every widening circle to change our world. And how we're going to change our world is being a tangible, visible evidence of Jesus' love in the city. And that's not going to happen this little circle right here by itself. The majority of people are on their chariots moving around this world searching for answers. They're just waiting for someone who is brave enough, who is bold enough, who is filled with love enough to move outside their comfort zone and walk beside them in their chariot and build a relationship with them until the moment they say, hey, can I help you with something? And you say, you know what? I've been watching your life and I don't understand that. I know you're not perfect, but there's something different about you. Will you sit with me and tell me what's different? Why radius? Because we are meant to be changers of this world through the power of Jesus. But we've got to get ourselves out there. It's not about come and see. And of course, we want you to invite friends to come and gather. But this gathering is about going and showing. Go and show. Live a life. And so, Jesus, and then Philip says, he gets up to it, and then the passage of Scripture that he had turned and been reading was this. He was like a led like a sheep to the slaughter, and the lamb is silent before the shearers. He did not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who could speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was this prophet talking about himself or someone else? I love it. So beginning with the same scripture, Philip told him the good news about Jesus. <clears throat> maybe you're in, maybe you've been in a chariot for a long time. You've been to church. Maybe you've been hurt by church. Maybe you feel rejected by the church. Maybe you feel abandoned. But there's something inside of you searching for truth. And you know there's something more. Can I tell you there is good news? His name is Jesus. He was the one that was persecuted, that took on my sin and your sin because we are broken people and because of our sin, we are separated from a holy God. But Jesus in God in flesh came. He stretched out His arm on a cross, shed His blood, died, took every sin upon Him. 
And we can be made right with Him. We can have relationship with Him by accepting what He did, by beginning and accepting relationship with Him. And in that simple task, not by going to church every Sunday, not by making sure you do every task on the list, but beginning a relationship with Him, inviting God into your life and in surrendering my life to you, God, I begin a relationship. In that, there's the good news because I am free. I am forgiven. I am His child. You see, I was thinking on the way to work, uh, on the on the way to work, on the way to church this morning, that Christian, I'm just saying they're Christian. You know what Christian is? It is the activity of a true believer. Christian is not who you are, it's what you do. A believer, a friend, a child of God is what we are. When I accept Christ, when I accept his death, and it takes no uh, uh, prerequisites. You don't have to get good before you come to God. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to understand everything about the Scripture before you, you come to Jesus. But you do need to understand that Jesus Christ died for your sin. He loves you. He wants to be in relationship with you. He took care of it all. And he, all these have to come to me. And if we will surrender ourselves, We'll say, you know what? I can't do it alone anymore. I am going to surrender. And I just say, Lord, I've tried it. And I trust me, I've tried it. Maybe you tried it. I'm sure we all have tried it. And we do not do a good job of managing our own life. Anybody in here want to agree with that one? Uh, yeah, amen. Preacher, brother. <laughs> right? Oh, we can try. We can try. The only thing when I try, what I experience in my life is regret and guilt. That's what I feel when I try to manage it on my own. And I ever feel like I can measure up. But when I decide that my life can be given to Jesus. God, use me. I want, I want your friendship. I want your relationship. Because in Him, I am made perfect. In Him, I'm forgiven. Philip goes out, meets the eunuch on his way. And this is the beginnings of the last part of that thing. The ends of the earth. Ethiopia to that place was the ends of of the earth. The gospel message, because of obedience, spread out in ever widening circles. Why does race exist? You want to know why we are here? You know why we sweat? You want to know why we gather every week? It's not because we think we have to do church. It's not because it's what we're supposed to do. It's what we get to do because we are the church and we're called to be the church in a community moving out to be light in the darkness, to meet people at their chariots and to give them the hope and the good news about Jesus. Can I ask you, believer, are you being a follower? Are you living your life? Are you being outside your comfort zone? Are you engaging in an intentional relationship with people to help them know who Jesus is? This is what will satisfy you. This will give you the greatest joy. And I guarantee if you live your life that way, you will not have regrets. You will not find a life at the end that wasn't lived well. We're going to be a church of people that intentionally move out to meet people where they're at and give them relationship. Give them relationships so that we can help them meet Jesus. So that's why the church has got to be more. It's got to be more, doesn't it? You've got to have more love. We need to experience, we need to be a church that's full of life. You know why we do silly stuff? We don't, we don't take ourselves seriously because we want to have fun. If we're the church and we're like, um, and we don't have, forget that, man. <laughs> if Jesus is life and light and he is the hope of the world, we need to be the most excited people in this universe. We've met Jesus. We have eternity secure. We have power and life to live. We should be the ones jumping up and down, having the greatest time. We should have more life, more love. We should have more peace because we know the one that's going to walk with us. This we need to dream more, don't we? So let's let's, I, let's be a church that's not settled to just do this thing. Let's dream bigger and better. I was thinking about. I wrote something down about a year ago. Right before I started, I was thinking, you know, I was thinking about what would what would Raiders look like one day? What could it look like? And I wrote these down and I shared it with our launch team. And I said, we want to be a people that don't go to church out of a sense of obligation to God or their pastor or their friends, but out of feeling excitement and connecting with their community and hearing from and speaking to the Creator. That's why we want to gather. So that, that we're not run by policies and procedures or traditions or religion, but by mission, grace, and truth. That we are a church that extends beyond these walls. 
that is, tang just, is just as tangible in our actions as it is in our address. We get this, we're sitting in this chair, but we need to be as tangible out there. You know one of the greatest, greatest compliments everybody's gone? People in need come up and say, are you guys the peanut butter and jelly church? Yep, that's us. I don't care if you call us PB&J. We're not ready. It's the peanut butter and jelly church. Because we're known by what we do and not what, who we are. We're known by our love. And that's where we're, and we're going to be tangible that way. We're going to show the love of Jesus in a tangible way. And, 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 and we means us. Right? It's us. You. Me. Never takes us too, too seriously. And considers anything other than God's authority. And that's nothing. Or it's okay to have a bad day. And where would I learn on Sunday? I can apply on Monday. I, was, I wrote, there's many more of these. But I wrote those and I was looking at this this week. And I thought, you know what? By the grace of God and by His power, we are seeing these things happen. But we're not coming to an end. Right? This is just the beginning. This, this isn't, we haven't run the race and finished the course. We are just getting started. The Bible says that he that began a good work in us will perform it, will complete it until the very day that Jesus Christ comes out, which means this, until Jesus comes back, we are about his business and he has got things planned for us and we need to dream bigger and attempt greater. Right? The Bible also says that we can't even uh, imagine God. What He imagines is far greater than we can imagine or think or believe what He has in store. So I, I challenge you, because you are the church. Let's imagine, let's dream bigger, because we can't outdream God and what He has seen for this city. We can't. We can dream, we can dream, and we will dream. We will dream as great as we can. But God's dream for raising the sea is greater. Let's dream. So we can dream. I want, I want to hear from you, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. And so email me, text me, call me, talk to me. I want to hear your dreams. But here's some of the things I wrote down. Because I want to put tangled things in front of us. This next year, here's what I want to see us dream to accomplish. I want to feed 100 families Thanksgiving dinner this year. 100 families. Right? We did 68 last year. Maybe I'm not dreaming big enough. So you can come after and say, Blake, your dream's too small. We can do 200. All right, great. You're the church. Let's do it. Let's go forward. So we said earlier in the chat, church in the park. Shed our building. Shed our comfort zones. Move out and love people where they're at. Worship with them. Sit beside them. We're going to ask you to step out of your comfort zone. We're going to ask you to bring a folding chair, not just for you and your little holy huddle, but for other people. <laughs> We want you to, and, 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 and you say, oh, these are our chairs, and those are your chairs. No, no, no. We all sit together. We all love together. God loves us, and we're meant to be a light in this community, and we're not going to let anything stop us. Amen? Amen. Woo! Yeah. Gets me excited. Church in the Park. I, I, I put a dream before us, and this has as much to do with you as to do with me. I want to see 100 people begin a relationship with Jesus Christ this year. This year. You know what it's going to take? It's going to take you and me living it. Because if they're not seeing us live it, your friends live it in your workplaces, they don't care what we have to say when you come on Sunday morning. It's going to take us inviting. Hey, can you know what? Come, come hang out with me. Come sit with me. We're going to love you. We're not going to judge you. I promise you, you probably think we're crazy more than anything else. But come on. We're going to, we're going to, this is something that's been on my heart from the beginning. We're going to create an event. I don't know. and I need your help. Create an event in the community to bring together the artists. We have so much artists and creativity in our community. We serve the Creator. There is no one more creative than Him. And so we should come together and highlight and honor creativity. And I think as raised, I want to see us gather and put together an event where our small the community are coming together. And we're not going to be throwing Bibles at them. We're going to love them and give them an opportunity to share their art. <coughs> yeah? We're going to move and we're going to sit with them in their chariots. Another dream I have is, and this is this is this is a push one, two sixteen by twenty sixteen. I want to, I want us to grow and say so always about numbers. No, it's about us growing to a size where our footprint is bigger in the community, where we can be make a more tangible difference in the community. I want to be us at two sixteen by the beginning of two thousand sixteen. Dream tangible. Let's move. I want to take a mission trip. I don't know where. I want to take it. It might be down the street. <laughs> All right. We're going to take a mission trip. I want people who are willing to say, you know what? I'm going to give them some time. I'm going to give them some finances. I'm going to see this mission trip. We're going to make a difference, whether here or some farther circle down the road. 
Here's, here's the end of five years. I'm done. I, want, I, I don't want to speak this to you guys. I want you to know that we're going somewhere. Not because of what we want to accomplish. Not because of our name, but because the name of Jesus needs to be known. And we need each of us to say, you know what? I'm on board. I'm going to do because God's called us to do something great in this community. Here it is. Five years. Have a semi-permanent to permanent location that is more community gathering than church gathering. That the community can come and we place this for the need. We place this for artists. We have a, a multifunctional building that, yeah, we are the church. We gather there, but there's much more going on there. That's what I see in five years. Lead the charge in the city to help help the needy in our community. Lead the charge. Not just be a part of it, but help lead it. We have people in this congregation, this body right now who have a passion to help. Maybe it's you. Help launch another church. Not Radius. Not our brand. Not our name. Not a satellite. But another local church who has a passion to make a difference in this community. I want to help us help them start in five years. Or less. You see, the dream of mobile ministry realized. Mobile ministry is something from the beginning that's been all heart. We want to have a taxi service to help pick people up who are drunk and are, are not able to get home. We can just be the love of Jesus in a very tangible way by picking them up. We tried it one time. It was fun. It wasn't that successful. It was fun. <laughs> but we're going to keep trying. Where we have a mobile youth, youth student thing that goes and parks where the students are, hangs out, sets up something awesome for people to hang out. And last, we have a food truck. A food truck that is mainly done for ministry. Now, I know Sound Sound Team, you can have a food truck, but there are different events that come with the food trucks are there, and we can be there. But more importantly, let's do this food truck to plant ourselves in neighborhoods and just serve people freely. And maybe my dreams aren't big enough. But you know what the good thing is? You're here. You're radius. So dream big. If we, attempt, if, we can att if we decide to attempt great things for God, we can expect great things from God. Holler. Woo! Amen. Amen. Let's pray.